Hey there, this is Anne Teagarden with episode 44 of the Unveiled podcast. And one of the reasons I called it Unveiled is because I like to unveil our hearts and look at what's going on underneath. Sometimes we're trying to solve an outward problem that really has more to do with the root below. And if you don't get at the root, you're never going to solve the problem. As an amateur gardener, I am always amazed at the tenacity of weeds and their ability to just pop up anywhere and everywhere. And then, of course, proliferate like crazy and take over the garden. In contrast, my zucchini plant has yet to produce a zucchini. And my other vegetable plants, they aren't looking that great either. Today, I found those big tomato hornworms eating up my tomato plants. But if I was trying to grow weeds, I would be a champion gardener. They all look really healthy and strong. Urgh. It seems like the good things take extra work to grow, but the evil things, they seem to grow pretty easily. Why is that? I really don't know. Maybe it's our human nature. Maybe it's the fall of mankind in the Garden of Eden. I'm not sure, but I know it's true in my garden and I know it's true in my heart. Resentment is particularly insidious root that you may not even know is there. We often don't recognize it. Now, I don't think of myself as someone who harbors a lot of resentment. I tend to be a very forgiving person. However, this year, God began showing me where there was resentment lurking in my heart from the past. And I was a little surprised, but it was there. And I'm going to come back to some more about this in a future episode. But this summer, in the pressure cooker of crisis, I learned about the dangers of resentment and how God delights in rooting it out of our hearts and what a benefit that is. Resentment is clearly not on the list of fruits of the Spirit. Therefore, it is not a fruit of the Spirit. It is a fruit of the enemy or our flesh. So this summer, how did this resentment come about? Well, I was tasked with the job of emptying out my in-laws basement, which was stuffed with tons of things that have been collected over 90 plus years. There were things from the 1920s through 2022. Now I've been married to my husband for 30 years and most of this stuff I had never even seen or knew existed. I found boxes and boxes of model trains and tracks that I thought, wow, my kids would have loved to have seen these and played with them when they were young. We found hundreds of computer parts and enough screws to fill a hardware store. There were 30 cameras in the basement, the newest one being probably from the 1960s. Suffice it to say, there was a lot of stuff. I would sort and sort and throw stuff away and box up other stuff, and it just seemed to never end. I worked for days, and I still hadn't even started on the largest rooms. And I would think I was making good progress and then I would move something and discover a whole new area of stuff behind something else. It was incredible. And what happened though, I'm sorry to admit, is that I began to build resentment toward my father-in-law for collecting so much stuff for not at least getting out and getting it out and showing it to his grandkids if he had it, for not getting rid of some of it and leaving it all for us to deal with. I was resenting his resistance to my trying to start this process two years ago. So one night I went home and I was really angry with him, to be honest. It made me grumpy. I was in a foul mood with the rest of my family. And it was really taking away my motivation to go back the next day. I was not liking my father-in-law very much at that moment. Thankfully, that evening, Jesus spoke to my heart and showed me that resentment had a foothold in my heart and it was coloring how I saw my father-in-law. It was causing me to pass judgment on him. It was causing bitterness to creep in and it was definitely stealing my joy. There's absolutely nothing I can do to change the past. I just needed to move forward. So I decided to forgive my father-in-law and truly let go of the resentment. And once I rejected the resentment, the anger toward him left and the negative thoughts toward him left. And I was able to get back to being okay with doing this project. Cleansing my heart of that resentment, it was a transformation. I felt freedom. I felt my joy return. And I was able to tackle the basement again the next day with a much more positive attitude. Interestingly, the following day, 
a friend that was helping me made a statement about being mad that my father-in-law had collected so much stuff and that was then dumped on us to figure out what to do with it and this person was feeling sorry for me. And I had to laugh and I told her that is exactly how I was feeling the day before, but I had let it go. Now, if I hadn't let go of it the day before, I think their comment would have really fueled my resentment and made it stronger and deeper. And it would have fed my self pity, which is never a good thing. So I was so grateful that God had set me free from that the day before, because honestly, I could say it's okay that next day. Had I not dealt with that resentment every day that I went back to that basement, it would have continued to feed and grow it until it would have eventually seriously damaged my relationship with my father-in-law. And that in turn could have hurt my relationship with my husband because he might have felt caught in the middle between us. So it is so important to keep short accounts. I got rid of that one right at the beginning because resentment very quickly turns into bitterness. Ephesians 4.31 says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. It's pretty clear that we're to trade bitterness and anger and malice for kindness, compassion, and forgiveness. Paul also tells us in Ephesians, he says, In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry and do not give the devil a foothold. Unforgiveness, unresolved anger, resentment, they really give the devil a foothold in a relationship and he begins to destroy it. As I said, resentment leads to bitterness or if you're a Star Wars fan out there, it leads to the dark side. Resentment will steal joy. Resentment will color how we see other people resentment and bitterness will end up eating our soul and if it's fed and left unchecked it can lead to murder now that may sound harsh but Cain resented Abel and eventually murdered him the Pharisees resented Jesus power and claims that he was the son of God and they worked to murder him I watched a video by Dr. Jim Richards the other day that said this very thing and he pointed out that murdering someone can look like ruining their reputation or working for their downfall. It doesn't have to be physical murder. Have you ever wondered why two married people that used to be in love can seek to destroy each other during a divorce settlement? I've seen it happen. And it's clear that bitterness and resentment are behind it. That's what's fueling it. It is nearly impossible to love someone well if we harbor resentment against them. Everything they do tends to irritate us. Resentment is kind of like an unhealed wound that when you touch it, it's really sensitive. And like the weeds, resentment can pop up just about anywhere at any time. And like weeds, left unchecked, resentment tends to multiply and take over and they'll eventually destroy the good plants in your garden and they'll destroy the good stuff in your heart. So how do you know if you have resentment in your heart? Like I said, it can be hidden. Well, if you stiffen up when someone's name is mentioned, there's most likely resentment toward them. Or if you find that someone you love is just irritating you constantly lately, that could be a root of resentment. At one point this summer, my husband and I were very irritable with each other. Stuff from my in-laws started getting stacked in our basement and I got really upset. And I realized that I was still frustrated with the three boxes of our stuff that were sitting there from when we moved two years ago. And immediately I recognized that the, I had this resentment that was now affecting how I was reacting to the new boxes. So I wasn't just reacting to the new boxes. I was bringing in this resentment and it was causing me to overreact. So without that resentment, I think I could have calmly handled the issue. Uh, but what I did do was I later spent time with the Lord dealing with that old resentment. And then I discussed the issue with Grant and I said, you know, try to understand my desire is to not have a bunch of boxes that we just don't get around to putting somewhere and they're going to clutter up our basement, which is a finished basement. And I don't want that on a long term basis. So that helped. But I found I was still somewhat irritable. So a few days later, I got with the Lord and I said, just take away any resentment toward Grant in my heart. Just anything, whatever it is, I choose to let it go. 
And I found that that made a remarkable difference in my relationship. Just that one thing really changed my outlook and feeling of closeness with my husband. Resentment can destroy closeness because it builds a wall between you and the other person. So the next time that you find yourself overreacting, ask yourself, where is this coming from? The next time your husband overreacts to you, ask, maybe there isn't something else behind this current problem that is bothering him or ask him directly. Get to the root and then deal with that. Rather than dealing with what's going on right now, find the root. It's just like with weeds. You know, if you don't get the whole root out, it's going to be back in two days. It's the same with resentment. Another way to see if you have resentment is simply to ask the Lord, Father, do I have resentment in my heart toward my husband? Or, Lord, is there anyone I am harboring resentment against? And he will show you. I've, I've done this, and he does. So how can you get free of resentment once you realize it's there? It starts with forgiveness. We must forgive others in order to find freedom. And remember, forgiveness doesn't mean saying what they did wasn't wrong. It simply means we choose to no longer hold it against them. And we're going to put it in God's hands. God is the proper judge, not us. And once we've forgiven them, we need to let go of the anger and resentment and bitterness attached with it. We have to stop replaying the event in our mind or verbally to others. We have to cease judging them. But I know what you're thinking. Well, what if they keep doing the same hurt over and over again? Well, when the disciples asked that question, what did Jesus say? He said, forgive 70 times 7. So we keep forgiving them. However, we also try to solve the problem through good communication or getting help from others. Okay, we don't need the same arrow being shot at us over and over. So it's important to try to resolve the issue as well as working on forgiving and letting go of resentment. And are you thinking, but isn't it more complicated than that, Anne? Not really. If we really want to let go of resentment in our heart, it will go. It's a matter of our will. We can't just say we forgive someone or say we're letting go of resentment, but we're still hanging on to the anger or those feelings of being justified in our indignation. Okay, holding on to resentment does not solve any problem. It actually creates more. But if we truly let it go, it will go. Okay, it doesn't, our, our letting go of the resentment doesn't change the past, but it definitely affects the future. So what are you watering in your garden? Are you watering and feeding the weeds, the negative stuff? Or are you focused on rooting out the weeds and watering and feeding the positive things? What do you have to lose by searching your heart for resentment and letting it go? Nothing. So I encourage you to try it. May your prayer be Psalm 5110, which says, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. When we clean resentment out of our hearts, God renews our spirit. And you will truly see the person in a whole new light. I can say that from experience. Keep short accounts. We should check this daily or weekly, but definitely when you find that you are frustrated or irritable with someone you love, Forgiving and letting go of resentment are the keys to happiness and right relationships. So go weed your garden. And as you are pulling up the literal weeds, allow God to work in your heart in the same way. I long to see you free. Remember, you are loved. You are beautiful. You are enough. And if this podcast was helpful to you, I ask you to please share it or please tell me in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Go in peace.